Okay, we are just entering France. That's right, the beginning of a new chapter for the Great Banana. We finally reached mainland France, and this is something we've been looking forward to for a long time. So our first stop is Menton. Retirement, the final chapter. These are the adventures of the Great Banana. It's one year mission to explore strange new foods, to seek out new pastas, and new ways to screw things up. To boldly go where no banana has gone before. Welcome to Menton. France. Uh, we just came back from the vet's office. We went to go and take Misty to see the doctor because she's been having trouble breathing lately. Uh, it's been going on for the last couple months and plus she's losing hair. So we thought we should just take her in to see if uh, they think of anything to help her out. And uh, the vet took x-rays and they did see some, a little bit of blockage, some dark matter uh, in the lungs and uh, so we prescribed some uh, steroids. So we'll see if that helps. If it helps, then we continue with, med with the medicine. And if not, then we'll have to see, um, you know, we'll go through further tests. And you know what, for the x-ray, for the medicine, for the consultation, you know, it was only 119 euros, so not too bad. Now we're just gonna kind of walk around the town, check it out, and then hopefully we'll be able to go to Monaco tomorrow. Even though the border's only a couple hundred meters that way, it just has a totally different vibe to it. France is very, very different. Um, people look different. <laughs> the, uh, the stores look different. Definitely less restaurants, uh, more clothing. Maybe it's just the city that we're in. But uh, so far, yeah, just different. Okay, so we made it to the Monaco train station and um, it wasn't that bad. It was a nice, comfortable train, nice and air conditioned. And now we're going to try to find the Japanese gardens. Oh my goodness, you guys don't understand how happy we are to see this. We haven't been to a Starbucks in almost a year. <laughs> Bring out the grande. And from the Japanese gardens, we're walking down to see if we can find the port. Isn't that interesting? The Monaco flag is the opposite of the Polish flag. So instead of Biała Czerwona, it's Czerwona Biała. Yep, this is the Hercules Marina that uh, when I applied for, for a berth, they basically laughed at me and said, your, your application will not be considered. Ding 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 Okay, so my impressions on the casino. What do you what did you think? Um, I mean it was nice, but I love the ceilings <laughs> to be honest, the best in the paintings. But um 
Las yeah. Vegas is much better. Yeah, Vegas. But you know what? It's it's the OG. It's the original one That's that right. Vegas probably tried to emulate. Very opulent inside. Gold, big paintings, nice ceilings. Bathrooms weren't anything special. Um, you know, the table games wasn't. They weren't busy. So, you know, it's got a lot of history. Like I said, the uh, the movie Goldfinger was played there. Um, I, I took a little picture of Alicia <laughs> doing the slot machines for Bapcha. So anyways, we're going to take a walk around the gardens. Yeah, that was 20 euros gone fast. And it was only two cent slots. Um, but uh, we're going to walk around the gardens here and then head back to the boat because poor Misty's been there for about uh, five hours now. So hopefully uh, she'll be okay. Bonsoir, Enjoy it while it lasts. The very words I live by. The next morning, we decided to go to Cannes and we made plans to go see some museums and things like that. But, like with many of our well made plans, things changed on the fly and we decided instead to go to Ez. <laughs> So we're at the top. We made it to the top of Ez. It's a medieval town, but I'll tell you, it's not worth it. The views are nice, but it is so freaking touristy and busy. Um, it's actually a lot quieter up here than it is coming up. Uh, we decided to do this instead of Nice. Last minute decision. Uh, had to take a bus up from the uh, train station, which is down there and it was very difficult to bring the dog up on a very crowded bus but anyways we're here so we might as well make the best of it and enjoy this nice hike we'll maybe get a bite to eat as well Okay, I found my happy spot. <laughs> Finally a place of peace and tranquility. And it's got a cool background too, a nice waterfall. And then we have this view at the top of Ez. I don't think all the tourists have found this place, thank goodness. Uh-oh. Hey, here they come. <laughs> So after a brief rest, we decided to uh, just head back down the hill and um, back through this windy medieval village. Uh, we chose a different way to go down than we came up and uh, found a lot of these quaint little streets. It was really beautiful. Uh, this is definitely a place that I would come back to. I mean, maybe I was too hard on it, but it's just not a place you want to go to during high tourist season. Okay, all done. All fueled up, ready to go. Goodbye, Menton. At least you really like this port. It was really quiet, um, peaceful, and uh, the town was kind of neat. So on to the next port of Antibes. Time to wear my new merch. Look at this shirt. Adventures of the Great Banana on the back. And Elysium. On the front, and where we got it from, Bonifacio.
look at this. Touristy and cheesy Ferris wheel. Sure, why not? I haven't done this since I was a kid. <laughs> Oh, what a great night in Antibes. We're so glad we decided to stay in a marina here so that we could enjoy uh, the old town at night. And what better way to end such a magical night but with a delicious Sunday? Okay, we are just leaving the port of Antibes. Uh, we love this place. It's so nice. The port was so calm. The city was amazing, lots of restaurants, lots of things to do, but just take a look at this marina. It is a maze of super yachts. So we were really lucky to get that, that last spot left. Okay, on to Saint Tropez. Okay, so here we are in the Bay of Saint Tropez. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of yachts. So anyways, we're gonna spend the night here and then tomorrow we're off to one of these uh, national parks and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a buoy. See you then. Wow, check that out, a nuclear submarine. Here we are in Marseille. Alicia was saying this is supposed to be like another Paris, another big city. You can definitely tell we're in uh, Metropolis now. They've got McDonald's, KFC, Waffle House, all the good stuff. Anyways, uh, we are right now on the way looking for a little tourist train to give us a lift around because it's really hot today and we've got the dog so we don't want her to do too much walking. Catch up later. Okay, today is actually going to be a day of churches. First stop, the Basilica. And look at this view. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to visit it because we have to catch the last train back in 20 minutes. When in France, do the mussels and fries, moule frites, oh, Thai, it's a Thai one, coconut. What a beautiful morning. So we're just leaving Marseille. It's about, uh, I think about 7.30, 8 a.m. We got a long sail today to get to Montpellier. Hopefully the seas will be calm. The weather looks decent, and uh, but it's gonna be about eight hours. So anyways, we'll see you there. Okay, here we are in Port Amargu after nine hours of sailing. Very tiring, very frustrating. I mean, it was calm, it was just long, and it's, you know, it's hard on the back, and you're fighting the boredom and things like that. The weather was good, um, not hot, not too cold. Um, the marina is decent, and it's like this uh, community where it's, it looks like a summer community where a lot of people would spend all summer here. It's got lots of stores and shops and grocery stores, music, band playing. The only thing is I had this pizza. Worst pizza I've ever had. <laughs> Never buy pizza in France. Good morning. We are just leaving Port Amargu and on our way to Agde. It's going to be a 10 hour boat ride, but we got to try and get there so that we can um, pick up our son Tyler or actually meet uh, somebody that will help us take our boat over to uh, Mallorca where we'll be hooking up with Tyler at the end of July. 
anyways it's gonna be a long cruise but the weather should be good just a little long wow check out this ocean it's been glass this whole trip so nice okay that was interesting we just got visited by the police so I guess what happened was um, I was sailing in a forbidden zone and they have some they use some fishing nets that can be close to the surface and not marked by buoys so anyways they were kind enough to come aboard and explain to us on our chart plotters I think technically they could have find us but uh, they they knew that we were just newbies and so uh, yeah they were nice enough to leave us alone okay here we are in Agdi another nice little marina we're side docked and uh, there's lots of restaurants and uh, things to do. This unassuming church is really cool. Now this is the stuff that I like. Check that out. about uh, 6 a.m. we're leaving early we're in really really shallow water it's really hard to see the uh, the beacons in this red orange sunrise um, the red light is barely visible it's it's right over there if you can see it okay welcome to the port of Argele uh, Argele sorry Argele so there wasn't much to do uh, during the day and it was hot so we ventured out at night and reveled in the excitement. All these people are so jealous about our front row seats. Okay, it's another early morning, six o'clock, and we're leaving to get to Spain. Um, we were treated with a wonderful fireworks last night from the boat, and that was really cool. But uh, anyways, I'll be glad to leave France, and uh, we got to get there before the winds start picking up. So hopefully it all goes well. See you soon. These French people are unbelievably rude. They sail like they're so arrogant. They're sailing right into us, and we had to actually put up our hands and say, what the F are you doing? And then they slowly veer off. Unreal. I mean, check out this guy. Look what he's doing. I mean, it looks a lot farther than it is. It's actually quite close. What an idiot. And if you had to take a guess, yes, he was French. Okay. So as you can tell, we couldn't get out of France fast enough and you couldn't pay us to go back. It's a, it's a shame because we were really looking forward to the French Riviera after hearing so much about it. I mean, it wasn't all bad though. I, there were some really nice people, but we found most of them really you know, rude and arrogant. There, there was even a situation where we, we returned a hamburger that was raw and they still wanted to charge us for it, saying that it wasn't their problem. I mean, I've never had that kind of response from any waiter all my life. Yes. And the, the French hate speaking English. There were, there were times where we knew they knew how to speak some English, but refused to do so even when we were having a hard time using our French Google translator. And the ironic thing is that I saw 
so many French people in Spain who expected the Spanish people to know how to speak French and they didn't even attempt to speak Spanish. Anyways, overall the French Riviera was a disappointment. Yes, it's more classy, maybe, maybe more bougie, but it's also more expensive and the grocery stores couldn't even compare to Spain or Italy. But things turn around for us when we hit Spain, so stay tuned for the next adventure of the Great Banana. Are you filming shit? Okay, so as you can tell, we couldn't get out of France fast enough, and you couldn't pay us to go back. It's a, it's a shame, because we were really looking forward to the French Riviera after hearing so much about it. I mean, it wasn't all bad, though. I, there were some really nice people, but we found most of them really, you know, rude and arrogant. There, there was even a situation where we, we returned a hamburger that was raw, and they still wanted to charge us for it, saying that it wasn't their problem. I mean, I've never had that kind of response from any waiter in all my life. Yes. And the, the French hate speaking English. There were, there were times where we knew they knew how to speak some English, but refused to do so, even when we were having a hard time using our French Google Translator. And the ironic thing is that I saw so many French people in Spain who expected the Spanish people to know how to speak French, and they didn't even attempt to speak Spanish. Anyways, overall the French Riviera was a disappointment. Yes, it's more classy, maybe, maybe more bougie, but it's also more expensive, and the grocery stores couldn't even compare to Spain or Italy. But things turn around for us when we hit Spain, so stay tuned for the next adventure of the Great Banana. <laughs>